Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to MSP lecture series on chemistry of main group elements. Let me begin uh, the discussion on group 1 elements that is chemistry of group 1 elements. Group 1 elements are essentially called as alkali metals and the electronic configuration is NS1 that is they have one electron in their valence shell and as a result oxidation state of uh, alkali metals is plus 1. And here I have listed all the alkali metals in that group 1 uh, of course including hydrogen of course I am not going to discuss about hydrogen. Uh, I shall draw your attention to only lithium to francium and we have totally 6 elements lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. And uh, to have some analogy with the next group element that is alkaline earth elements I have also listed here. Of course, that also starts with beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium and we come across some similarities uh, between them. Those things I shall discuss when I move to group 2 uh, chemistry. The important uh, future of alkali metals is the group oxidate is plus 1 and these metals uh, readily react with water to form hydroxides and which are strongly alkaline in nature and hence the name alkali metals since they react very readily with uh, water to form the corresponding hydroxides which are strongly basic in nature they are called alkali metals. And sodium and potassium are abundant whereas lithium, rubidium and cesium are less abundant and francium is highly radioactive and longest lived isotope of francium is 223 francium that has about half life of 21 minutes. This half life is 21 minutes. Okay. So, chemistry of lithium is little different from those of other group members owing to its small size. In fact, this trend we are going to see when we discuss chemistry group wise in each group the first element shows little different behavior both in terms of physical as well as chemical compared to the rest of the group members. And lithium shows similarities to magnesium in terms of its properties usually known as diagonal relationship and sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium ions are in larger proportions in biological fluids and they perform important biological functions such as maintenance of ion balance and nerve impulse conduction. Okay. And, and here uh, within a group the size is steadily increasing that you should remember and loosely held S electrons all these have NS1 electronic configuration that is in the valence shell they have one electron these electrons are loosely held and hence they can be readily removed and as a result group 1 elements show very low ionization energy and all elements are electropositive and in fact they are the most electropositive elements in the entire periodic table. Uh, so, they readily form M plus ions and M plus ions are smaller than M as expected because we are removing that lone electron present in the valence shell as a result effective nuclear charge increases making the M plus cation much smaller in size compared to M and atomic and ionic radii increases down the group as the size increases it is expected. In fact, they have the largest size in their respective period or rows and ionization energy decreases down the group as the size steadily increases and hydration enthalpy decreases down the group due to again increase in the ionic size that means if you look into the hydration enthalpy that follows this order uh, maximum hydration enthalpy was shown by lithium and then sodium and then potassium and then rubidium and then cesium. 
Okay. So, that means of course, you can also correlate the size is increasing in this order as the size increases hydration enthalpy decreases as a result they have less tendency to have an association now with water molecules. In fact, lithium plus has maximum degree of hydration and all lithium salts are hydrated. For example, if you look into LiCl, it has two water molecules. Let us look into the occurrence and sodium and potassium are abundant in the earth's biosphere accounts for about 2.6 and 2.4 percent respectively, but do not occur naturally in the elemental form. So, none of these alkali metals occur in elemental form because of their high reactivity. So, the main sources of sodium and potassium is essentially sea water and also in case of KCl and in case of both KCl and NaCl, sylvinite and cornelite, it is a mixture of KCl, MgCl2, Six H two O. So other uh, sodium and potassium containing minerals such as borax, and chili saltpeter that is NaNO3. Okay. So, uh, these are the uh, major sources of uh, uh, some of these alkali metals. So, unlike many inorganic chemicals, sodium chloride need not be manufactured uh, since large natural deposits are available. So, evaporation of simply evaporation of sea water yields a mixture of salts since sodium chloride represents the major component of the mixture its production in this manner is viable operation. So, in contrast to sodium and potassium, natural abundance of lithium, rubidium, cesium is very low okay. and rubidium and cesium are in very small or in trace quantities and these metals occur as various silicate minerals. For example, spa domain like LiAl, Si2O6 uh, have written there. So, from these some of these minerals the corresponding alkali metals are extracted. Let us look into the general properties. I have listed here general properties for uh, alkali metals and you can look into the metallic radius uh, for all these uh, elements. Uh, metallic radius is steadily increasing as expected due to the increase in the size and consequently ionic radius is also increasing and with uh, lithium showing 59 picometer and ionization energy also decreasing in this order uh, because of increase in size ionization energy decreases with highest ionization energy is shown by lithium and standard potential is also shown here. This is more or less uh, uh, comparable for all uh, alkali metals and density also increasing as we go down the group and melting point is decreasing as we go down the group here. Okay. Melting point is more in case of uh, uh, lithium whereas in case of sodium and potassium steadily decreases. Let us look into the extraction of sodium and sodium is manufactured by the process called down process and although we have plenty of uh, uh, sodium chloride is available, we cannot simply do aqueous electrolysis. Uh, to isolate to separate sodium because its reactivity violent reaction with water that leads to the formation of sodium hydroxide. We have to find an alternate method. So, this is essentially an electrolysis electrolysis method, but it is called fused electrolysis or molten electrolysis. In this process molten sodium chloride is electrolyzed 
and here we are adding calcium chloride to reduce the operating temperature to about 870 Kelvin. Uh, if we simply consider sodium chloride, its melting point is 1073 Kelvin. In order to melt, decrease the melting point, uh, calcium chloride is added and when the calcium chloride is added, uh, we all know the cryoscopy properties, elevation in the boiling point, depression in the freezing point when impurities are added. So, here uh, calcium chloride is added in considerable quantity uh, to sodium chloride to reduce its melting point so that molten electrolysis can be carried out at a operatable temperature and reaction condition. The design of the electrolysis cell is critical to prevent reformation of sodium chloride by recombination of sodium and chlorine. And before that, let us look into some facts that are concerned about down process. As I mentioned, uh, we are adding some calcium chloride or barium chloride or strontium chloride uh, or in some cases sodium fluoride can also be added uh, to reduce the temperature required to perform electrolysis in liquid phase and sodium chloride melts at 801 degree centigrade or 1074 Kelvin, but a salt mixture can be kept liquid at a temperature as low as 505 degree centigrade. But for this one uh, to achieve this low temperature, one has to add considerable amount of calcium chloride. So, in this particular uh, uh, method, Downs method, 33.2 percent sodium chloride is taken and 66.8 percent of calcium chloride is added, almost two fold calcium chloride is added to bring down the melting point to 505 degree centigrade so that it can be conducted at the temperature without much problem. If pure sodium chloride is used, a metallic fog is formed in the molten sodium chloride which is impossible to separate. As a result, we are using and of course, one is operating temperature and, and also at that condition whether the uh, electrolysis cell we are using will be last longer all those things has to be considered. And here for the same reason about uh, fold calcium chloride is added to perform molten electrolysis. And I am showing you the model representing electrolysis cell used in the Downs process to produce sodium commercially from sodium chloride. And the one thing one should remember is the products sodium and chlorine must be kept separate from each other to prevent recombination to form again sodium chloride. This is the cell and you can see here we have this uh, cathode, iron cathode and a separate chamber is there and then a graphite anode is there and the chlorine that is liberated here goes off well separated. And then here this is the place where uh, electrolyte is added, okay. so that means uh, molten sodium chloride and calcium chloride will be there. And then here this is uh, way out for sodium to take out sodium. So, this one essentially this essentially keeps uh, in such a way that there is no recombination of sodium and chlorine and this is also shown in this figure you can see here clearly and, and here anode uh, and cathode are there and they are well separated and sodium chloride is coming here and inert electrode and then whatever the sodium comes here can be taken out. And the overall reaction is given at cathode Na plus okay, takes an electron to form sodium metal at the anode 2 Cl minus will be getting oxidized to uh, Cl2 and overall reaction is 2 Na plus plus 2 Cl minus gives 2 Na plus Cl2 and both of them are separated at their respective electrodes. The next the question is if we are performing electrolysis and reducing sodium. Is there any chance of calcium getting reduced? Of course, uh, there is every possibility of calcium also getting reduced, but here we should look into the reduction potential. The reduction potential of uh, calcium is is 
is minus 2.87 volts whereas the reduction potential of sodium is minus 2.71 volts. So that means uh, here uh, by controlling the voltage we can ensure that only uh, sodium is reduced and not calcium. So this way uh, contamination of uh, calcium can be prevented while reducing sodium. Okay. So we are essentially exploiting the difference in the reduction potential of calcium and sodium. And because of this control of uh, voltage the sodium ions are reduced to metallic form in preference to those of calcium. So due to the presence of only one valence electron metal metal bonds are weak and hence they are soft metals. If they are soft metals that can be easily we can cut it indicates we do not have extensive metal metal bonding that we come across in case of tungsten metals. And of course here we have only one electron in the valence shell it is not sufficient to make the metal metal bond stronger as a result they are all soft metals. They impart characteristic color to an oxidizing flame this essentially due to the excitation of S electron to the p orbital that means essentially uh, when are exposed when these alkali metals are exposed to flame okay, they import a characteristic color that comes essentially because of the excitation of the lone electron present in the valence shell to the higher orbital. For example, let us take Ns1 and we have Np0 we do not have any electron. So, on uh, uh, exposing to the flame this electron is excited and it goes to this one we will be having this kind of situation here and, and this excited electron will emit radiation in the visible region while returning to the ground state. So, when it comes back okay, it emits in the visible region depending upon what uh, okay, electromagnetic radiation it emits that color is shown by these ions. So, this is called flame test. So, of course, in the flame test they gave a characteristic color lithium will okay, impart crimson red color and the wavelength is 670.8 nanometer and sodium imparts golden yellow color and its wavelength is 589.2 and potassium imparts violet color 766.5 is the wavelength and rubidium shows red violet color and the wavelength is 780 nanometer and cesium shows blue color and the wavelength is 455.5. So, that means it is a characteristic uh, uh, you know uh, test we perform to identify these alkali metals in a given uh, salt. And you can see here the different colors uh, whatever I have mentioned is shown here uh, crimson red, golden yellow and uh, golden yellow and then violet and red violet and blue color respectively for lithium to cesium. And as I mentioned because of one electron metal metal bonds are not very strong. So, all of them are silvery white soft solid can be cut with a knife except lithium. Lithium is bit hard they are highly malleable and ductile. Silver luster is essentially due to the presence of highly mobile electrons of the metallic lattice. In the lattice what happens this one electron present in the valence have some sort of uh, a stream of uh, electrons they will be moving very freely over the surface giving a silver luster to all these metals and the large size in their respective periods okay, and size increases down the group. If you consider any period the large size is shown by these alkali metals and ionization energy decreases down the group and all these alkali metals show plus 1 oxidation state. And reducing character of all these alkali metals increases from sodium to cesium and however strongest lithium is the strongest reducing agent that means all uh, alkali metals are reducing agents. and this trend increases okay, uh, down the group 
and they have very low melting points due to weak metallic bonds and density increases from lithium to cesium except potassium being lighter than sodium. So, ionic character increases from lithium to cesium. So, ionic character whatever is there in whatever the compounds we make increases from lithium to cesium. In case of lithium uh, with any element we react that means whether we will consider lithium hydride, lithium oxide or lithium halide there is some covalent character is there because of the smaller size. And all these alkali metals are good conductors of heat and electricity. Let us uh, while looking into the chemical reactivity let us classify the reactions accordingly like uh, how they interact with uh, oxygen, how they interact with water and how they react with hydrogen and nitrogen and halogen or organic moieties and how they behave in liquid ammonia. Some of these aspects we shall see while looking into the reactivity. Okay. So, here all these alkali metals readily react with oxygen to form the corresponding oxides. For example, you can see here lithium forms lithium oxide and anion is O2 minus and the hydrolysis product is OH minus. That means, lithium oxide when it is reacted with water it gives lithium hydroxide and similarly sodium can form both sodium oxide and sodium peroxide and anion is peroxide okay, in case of sodium peroxide and hydrolysis product can be hydroxide or H2O2. And in case of uh, uh, potassium, rubidium and cesium all of them form superoxides and anion is O2 minus and in this case they can form their OH minus H2O2 or O2 on hydrolysis. So, now let us look into the chemical properties as I said uh, all these elements react with oxygen and as a result okay, when they are exposed to air the, the metal shining is tarnished okay, essentially formation of a, a coating of metal oxide or hydroxide on their surface. When heated in excess of air lithium forms normal oxides sodium forms peroxides and others form superoxides and potassium can form all three types of oxides. So, it is unique okay. lithium forms only oxide sodium to an extent form can form oxide as well as peroxide, but whereas potassium can form oxide peroxide as well as superoxide and heavier alkali metals form only superoxides. Okay. So, let us look into the reaction with oxygen. For example, this, this is oxide because O2 minus is there and sodium will form sodium peroxide. So, this is peroxide. And M plus O2 gives MO2 is essentially superoxide. So, here M can be potassium, rubidium, or cesium. For example, uh, let us consider 2NA plus 2H2O gives 2NaOH plus H2 is liberated. Similarly, 2Na when it reacts with oxygen it forms sodium peroxide Na2O2 and when Na2O2 is treated with water it forms Na2O sodium oxide and it forms H2O2. Sodium also reacts with liquid ammonia
2 n a plus 2 n h 3 gives 2 n a n h 2 plus h 2. So, that means 2 equivalents of sodium reacts with 2 equivalents of ammonia to give 2 equivalents of N A and H 2 through the liberation of 1 equivalent of H 2. Uh, let me elaborate only one reaction here before I conclude my talk. So, it forms sodium oxide also, it forms oxide also. The sodium oxide uh, reacts with water to give sodium hydroxide okay. and similarly sodium peroxide can also form uh, react stepwise with water. First if you treat this with one equivalent of water initially it forms sodium oxide plus H2O2 is formed and next Na2O can react with water to form 2 NaOH. Okay, so, one can that is the reason I showed you that it gives the products as H2O2 as well as OH. Let me stop at this juncture, let me discuss more chemistry in my next uh, lecture. Uh, until then, have a present uh, reading of inorganic chemistry. Thank you very much. Vayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.